Hi, welcome to a new episode of Morbid Monday. It's uh, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been like almost three weeks since I've posted. Now I don't normally want to go that long without posting, but you know it just happens. Today I want to talk about a case that I found out about through the infographics show channel and I'll definitely link the video below. I have my theories about this case. This is going to be an open discourse. We're going to all share our theories if you have any, if anybody wants to comment, you know, on my videos once in a while. So the way that this story has been told, both in the video and the various articles that I've read, is of this construction crew they go into this no frills supermarket and this takes place january 2019 so a year and a half ago now and this is a store that's been closed for about three years the person that they had found was an ex-employee of that store who worked there and who had disappeared almost 10 years earlier it's crazy. His body was of 25-year-old Larry Eli Murillo Moncada. So the last time that his family saw him was Thanksgiving of 2009. He had come home after his shift at the supermarket and his mom says that he was already experiencing psychosis. Based on the description, it seemed like he was perhaps schizophrenic. Earlier that day, he had gotten a new prescription, an antidepressant that wasn't, it didn't seem to work for him. It was just one day that he'd been taking it, I guess when he just went off after Thanksgiving dinner into the snowstorm without a jacket, without any shoes, not even any socks. And this was the last time this family saw him. So again, this was November 2009 and his body was found January 2019. So that's nine years and two, three months later. Now people assume that because he was experiencing psychosis and it was getting worse, and I guess his mom said that he started talking about feeling like somebody was following him. After reading like numerous articles, I don't know, but I just, I was left with more questions. Like obviously he went back to the store, but was the store already open? And maybe the cameras didn't catch him. So he was found in the supermarket. He was found behind the, you know, those large refrigerators. He was found you know, behind the fridge, and there was like an 18 inch gap between the wall and the fridge. And that's where his body was found. They think that in his psychosis, he might have gotten on top of the fridge and could have just fallen back. Again, just not being in the right state of mind. But obviously if the store was open then somebody must have seen him. But again, it was also Thanksgiving night, I guess. So maybe not many people were there. Maybe there weren't cameras pointing in the right direction to have seen him whether the store was open or closed. It's really hard to understand how this all really happened, but they think that again, in the state of mind that he was in, he could have gone up there, which I guess employees normally did to like stock things or whatever the reason was that he found himself on top of these fridges were I guess 12 feet tall, that he went up there and he obviously fell back. However, when the body was found, there was no trauma found during the autopsy. So, so people think that if he was alive and he was screaming, you know, for like the first few hours, they think that you wouldn't have been able to hear his screams because the fridges were really loud. But I'm just wondering, like, did somebody actually test that theory? Did they stand behind this type of fridge? And again, did they test this theory? I don't know. This is an unanswered thing in the various articles that I've read. How loud was the fridge that you couldn't hear him? Or what about the smell? Why couldn't we smell his body? So I looked into comas and how people could get into comas because again, no trauma was found. I don't know, okay guys, I'm not like an expert on science or anything, but, but my theory based on the research that I did is that the reason that they couldn't hear him is because he went into a coma and sure there was no trauma found and correct me if i'm wrong but one of the reasons that i read according to webmd one of the ways that a person can get into a coma is through lack of oxygen so that's my theory like let me know if you're like a studying medicine or you're your doctor but what lack of oxygen would it show up as trauma 10 almost 10 years later in a in a dead body so that's the best way that I can explain it. But again, that's just my theory. If you know better, let me know. So what about the smell? Dead bodies are supposed to smell pretty bad. So I've looked into the process of mummification because 
This again seems like a likely theory. In some articles I did read that his body was mummified. And how does this happen? Well, I looked into it. I guess, obviously, to become mummified, you have to lose all your, um, you have to dry out, okay? And we know that behind the fridge, you can feel warmth. So I think because he was in this tight space, you know, an 18 inch gap, and you know, the backs of the fridge are pretty warm, I think this is a way that his body could have become mummified and just sped up the process of mummification. And this is why people didn't really smell the body as much. I mean, there were comments after the whole story came out last year, of course, people started saying, you know what, that store did smell weird. I remember it smelled really bad and I thought it was bad meat or whatever. The point is, this is how mummification happens apparently. So obviously your body has to dry out and I guess being confined in a small or tight space will also contribute to the mummification process. So I don't know, but that's just my theory. Coma because of lack of oxygen and his body must have been mummified because a body does eventually start to smell bad. So have you heard of this story? Because I never heard of it before. And it's a really sad story actually because we don't know how he was spending his last moments. I mean, obviously he was having psychotic episodes and it must have been really lonely. And the reason why he found himself on top of the fridge to begin with could have been to like kind of escape. I don't know why he would escape at work, but can't really explain people in psychotic episodes. And because he wasn't supposed to be working that day at the store, uh, the police didn't know to look for him there because obviously if he did, then that would have been the last place that he could have been at. But again, he wasn't supposed to be working that day. So they didn't look for him there. Like he was at the store that continued to operate for another six years and they didn't even know he was there. Like his body was there the entire time. It's a pretty crazy story. I guess all we're really left with our theories of course there are people who think that he was murdered i'd be interested in hearing that version or that theory like i said this is a series that i call morbid monday and i post you know i'm supposed to post every monday i mostly do i just didn't do it the last couple weeks but i share true crime stories or paranormal stories or about legends and aliens i like aliens thank you for watching this video bye